students. Today we're going to play with a wonderful si simulation made um, by the University of Colorado. Their simulation is at FET, P H E T dot Colorado dot edu. Now, um, all credit goes to them for this work. They have all kinds of simulations. If you're studying, if you're in another science class, you can just search through their list. It's a wonderful way to be able to do a lab without being in a lab. And right now, since we're all stuck at home, we get to play with their simulation. So I would like to thank FET.Colorado.edu for their wonderful uh, free and fun to use simulations. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to type in vet.colorado.edu into your um, browser. And then under the search icon, type in gas and pick the one that says gas properties. I'm also going to send you a link, but in case the link doesn't work, when you do what I just said, vet.colorado.edu, search for gas and pick the one that says gas properties, you're going to get a screen that looks like this. So you're going to click on ideal. And once you click on ideal, you're going to get all these options. We're playing with ideal gases because ideal gases obey the kinetic theory. And you've just read about the kinetic theory and the postulates. Sometimes there's three, sometimes there's four. It depends on the textbook you have, but they all say the same thing. They just divide it up differently. It's not that they're all disagreeing. Now, to start, I want you to set your volume on constant, and we're going to hold the volume constant. That means the size of the container that the gas is in is going to stay at the same volume. And then you see you have a pump here and you have a blue gas and a red gas. Now you're going to pump in some gas. And that's probably enough so that you can see what's going on. All right, at the bottom of your container, now watch what these gas molecules are doing and compare that to what you read about the kinetic theory yesterday. You'll notice that these gas molecules are obeying the kinetic theory the particles in the gas are small. They should have an insignificant volume compared to the container they're in, but we need to be able to see them. So their volume has some significance in the simulation, but that's okay. Um, but the first postulate of the kinetic theory says the particles in a gas are small with an insignificant volume. In other words, relative to the space they're in, their size is insignificant. It's just like one hair on your head makes your mass, your overall mass, significant, insignificant. You wouldn't stand on the scale at home and say, oh gosh, I need to lose weight, I'm going to pull out a hair. The mass of one of your hairs is insignificant relative to the size of your body. And the volume of a gas molecule should be insignificant relative to the container it's in. Now. You should notice by what's happening here that the relative motion of the gas particles are rapid. They are in constant and random motion. And the simulation does a wonderful job of making them be in random motion. And number three, you'll notice that the collisions between the gas particles are perfectly elastic. In other words, there's no loss of energy. How do you have a perfectly elastic collision? Well, you've all played with bouncy balls. And if I dropped a bouncy ball and kept my hand at the same height where I dropped the ball from and it came back up to my hand to the same height, that would be a perfectly elastic collision. Now that's counterintuitive to us because that doesn't happen. Some of the energy of the ball dissipates as heat or vibrations upon hitting the floor. So it's never going to bounce back up as high as where you dropped it from. However, in a perfectly elastic condition, the ball would and could. So when we talk about the kinetic theory, we are talking about ideal situations. In an ideal situation, the collisions are perfectly elastic. The gas particles are moving in rapid, constant, straight line motion. And the gas particles have a negligible or insignificant volume relative to the container. Okay, 
Now what we're going to do is we are going to go to the hot cold bucket at the bottom of the screen and we're going to increase the temperature. Now before you do that, predict in your head what you think is going to happen. Okay, I'm going to increase the temperature. Now what do you notice about the speed of the molecules? We're heating them up so they move faster. Oh my goodness, I just blew the lid off. Okay, so I'm going to return the lid. I actually didn't know that would happen. That's really funny. I now, my love for vet.colorado.edu just entered a new realm. <laughs> Guys, we just had an explosion in a simulation. I hope you're as excited as me. Okay, so let's heat this back up. Now, something else I want you to notice is what's happening to the pressure. My pressure is going sky high, 171.89 atmospheres. And look at my temperature, 3,109 Kelvin. No wonder we had an explosion, okay? All right, I just have to see if this will happen again. All right, oh, oh, there we go, there we go. Losing gas molecules, oh, okay. Now, I'm gonna pump some more in since I lost some, okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cool it down. What do you expect will happen? Yeah, of course, the molecules will slow down, okay? So the molecules are slowing down, and what's happening to the pressure? Yeah, the pressure gauge is getting lower and lower and lower. Another thing you can play with in this is um, uh, instead of volume being constant, Let's click on temperature being hot. Well, let's get it a little warmer first, because otherwise it's going to be very boring. We want to. We don't want to have the lid blow off again, but we want to at least have some pretty good movement. Eh, let's get them moving faster. All right, we're up to 888 Kelvin and 34.2 or four atmospheres. Okay, here we go. I'm going to make the temperature hold constant now. Okay, so when I make the temperature, sorry, can you hear my lawn guys are here? And being a brand new YouTuber, I don't have the ability to pause my videos. I'll learn. I'll get better. Okay, now watch what we're going to do. We're going to, well, before we do it, just think what would happen. What do you think will happen? I'm holding the temperature constant. I'm going to increase the volume of the box. Think in your head what's going to happen to the pressure, and then do it. Pull the handle, zonk, and watch the pressure. Did the pressure go down? Yeah. Well, what is pressure? Pressure is just basically the measure of the gas molecules hitting the sides of the container. All right. Now we're going to decrease the volume of the container. Let's make it as small as we possibly can. What do you think is going to happen this time? Grab the handle. That's a small... Oh my goodness! Now the molecules look like they're moving faster. And while they look like they're moving faster, obviously the pressure is going up. Why is the pressure going up? Well, the pressure is going up because the molecules are hitting the sides of the container more often. And every time they hit the sides of the container, they are able to create pressure. Okay, so I've uploaded a worksheet for you to do while you play with this at home. And I hope you enjoy it. You can do a lot more with this. And this will intuitively help you understand the kinetic theory. So thanks, fet.colorado.edu, for providing us such wonderful content.